In tonight's headlines, a survey suggests that local workers are worried about losing their jobs if the government expands labor importation scheme. A female cyclist died this afternoon after being hit by a tour bus on Lento Island. And Labor Secretary Chris Sanchez. Former employees of defunct health club chain Fisco Fitness can apply to the Protection of Wages on Insolvency Fund for help with unpaid salaries. A union survey revealed that over 60% of local workers worried that the expansion in foreign workers' importation scheme would impact their job opportunities and income. The survey, conducted by the Retail, Commerce, and Clothing Industries General Union, interviewed 177 workers from the retail, food and beverages, and property management sectors through questionnaires between April and August. The results indicated that 44% of the respondents reflected that their income has been affected by the sluggish economy in the past year. And about 63% believe that their job opportunities and income were affected by an influx of imported workers. Meanwhile, 30% of respondents believe that a moderate proportion of migrant laborers could be acceptable, while none of the respondents considered it necessary to fully import foreign labor. Separately. The union also questioned individual employers for not intending to hire local workers before looking for foreign workers, or setting different requirements for local and foreign workers for the same job. For instance, a salesperson job advertisement posted on the Labor Department's website showed that local workers need to have at least secondary three level, while migrant workers only need to be primary school graduates. Given the current economic conditions, the union prompted the government to stop bringing in foreign laborers for 26 non-skill or low-skill jobs, and practically implement family-friendly measures to encourage employment. Evelyn Bai, Cable News. A survey by the Society for Community Organization highlighted significant concerns regarding employment and economic conditions among grassroots citizens for the upcoming policy address set to be delivered on October 16th. The survey, receiving responses from over 700 grassroots citizens, revealed alarming statistics in jobless and underemployment rates, which have hit unprecedented levels. While three percent of the respondents reported unemployment problems in general, the rate in the construction sector alone reached 4.3 percent, and only about 20 percent of the surveyed households reported that the main wage earners were employed full time. More than 50 percent respondents expressed unsatisfaction about the government's employment plan last year, while over 40 percent indicated that their households were in debt. The labor importation policies have exacerbated these issues by undercutting local job opportunities, according to the survey. This respondent said, as soon as imported workers arrived, he lost his job immediately, and he could only live on casual works, which was insufficient. He also said he recently landed a permanent job, but at the cost of a one-third payment cut to compete with imported workers. Soko's deputy director Si Lai Shen said, "A thorough review of the labor importation policies is needed across various industries. Adding reports from residents about insufficient work opportunities are pouring in from sectors such as renovation, dining, retail, and warehousing." The organization urged the government to take into account the high rates of underemployment and unemployment in certain sectors and promptly reassess the relevant policies. Quentin Yang, Cable News. A cyclist died after being struck by a tour bus on Lento Island this afternoon. The fatal accident happened at around 3 p.m. on Kangshan Road near the Singfai Orchard bus stop, where a tour bus hit the victim, a 31-year-old woman from the mainland, causing injuries to her head. The woman died immediately at the scene. 
Authorities quickly responded to the scene where the woman's body was covered with a white cloth by the police. The cause of the incident is still under investigation. The routes leading to and from the site were once all closed, causing heavy traffic congestion, and now one lane has been reopened for two-way traffic. Bus services are also gradually resuming. The Labor and Welfare Secretary Kreisen said today it is only a matter of time for former employees to get their wages and severance payments back from the physical fitness, following its abrupt closure more than a week ago. Sun said the Labor Department had received a request for help from about 670 employees and promised that they would soon receive help with unpaid remuneration from the Protection of Wages and Insolvency Fund. We are trying our very best. Uh, to uh, persuade uh, the employer of the uh, physical health, uh, physical fitness uh, to sign um, uh, a statement declaring that they are unable to pay. So if uh, this statement can be signed, it will uh, speed up the whole process. Uh, so the 600 odd uh, employees, they will get uh, payment on the, the PWIF uh, uh, in a very, very speedy manner. But if the statement is not available, the wage problem can still be resolved by the Labor Tribunal in the court, only for a bit more time, he added. The director of the University of Hong Kong's Center for Suicide Research and Prevention, Paul Yip, said, the three-tier school-based emergency mechanism designed to prevent youth suicide has been effective but needs more data to evaluate its direct impact on preventing suicides. I think it has managed, I think, to capture some of the students that have the needs. Nevertheless, I think the overall arrangements, I think, it still can be further enhanced. I think we will be continuous the discussion with the school principals and then the other personnel, and then we will hopefully we will come up with a recommendation by the end of this year. Yip added that, it is crucial not to medicalize suicide prevention efforts, but to systematize mental health care. Meanwhile, Chairwoman of the Hong Kong Association of Careers Masters and Guidance Masters Esther Hall said the mechanism should be made regular, removing the term emergency, because it should not be a responsive initiative. According to the latest survey by the center, the suicide rate among teenagers under 15 rose to a 10-year high of 2.9 per 100,000 people last year. Yip noted that half of the student suicide cases were from single parents or divorced families, calling on building supportive relationships with youth and also creating a happy campus where students feel cared for and valued. Financial Secretary Paul Chen called the planned issue of the silver bonds a win-win investment, as it would offer investors attractive returns while injecting vital financial resources into the city's development. The initiative, part of the infrastructure bond program, seeks to raise $50 billion, with each bond priced at $10,000 and offering a minimum interest rate of 4%, payable semi-annually. Writing on his blog, the finance chief said, while technology innovation and infrastructure construction can lead to leaps and bounds in economic and industry development in the city, this force needs capital support and leverage financial power. Through investing in such bonds, elderly citizens can get low-risk and reliable returns and also contribute towards the development of their own community and the city, he added. Since the beginning of the year, various agencies, including the Airport Authority, the Urban Renewal Authority, and the Housing Authority, have successfully raised funds through bond issuance, attracting significant interest from both local and international investors. Chen noted that these bonds had seen oversubscription, reflecting strong market confidence in the ICR's economic prospects. The finance chief also expressed hope to achieve a more inclusive financial landscape and to enhance citizens' sense of participation and gain in infrastructure and sustainable development projects. 
In addition to the silver bonds, which is expected to be available to the public from September 30th for the latest batch, the government also plans to issue retail green bonds and infrastructure bonds to raise $20 billion, and the details will be reviewed in the next few months, he said. Quentin Yang, Cable News. The city's first water reclamation plant, located in Shek Wuhui North District, will soon be fully commissioned with a daily production capacity of over 70,000 cubic meters of reclaimed water. Since commencing operation in March, the Shek Wuhui water reclamation plant has been supplying reclaimed water for three schools and four housing estates in Shangshui for toilet flushing and other non-portable applications. The water supplies department expected that once all residents of the new development areas in Kutung North and Fanning North have moved in, the plant will be put into full operation, supplying 70,000 cubic meters of reclaimed water daily for some 520,000 residents. This could save about 22 million cubic meters of drinking water annually, equivalent to the volume of 8,800 swimming pools and translating to $48 million in money terms. Meanwhile, the authority is now upgrading the existing Yunlong sewage treatment facility with a long-term goal to increase the coverage of recycled water and seawater for toilet flushing from the current 85 percent to 90 percent of the population. Torrential rains have battered large parts of eastern and central Europe causing extensive flooding in low-lying regions of Romania and the Czech Republic. Four people were killed in the southeastern region of Galati in Romania, where large swathes of land were submerged underwater. Rescue teams went door-to-door, -door, pulling out people who were stranded in their homes. Floodwaters burst the banks of the Novoraka River in the town of Luza in the eastern Czech Republic, inundating entire neighborhoods. In the same region, the town of Miklovis also received heavy rainfall. Strong winds and the deluge from the downpour left more than 63,000 households without power. Rainwater from surrounding areas channeled into the Vlatawa River in the capital Prague. The water level crossed the danger mark and authorities were forced to close certain sections to access the river. Barriers were erected in low-lying areas to prevent the river from overflowing inside the city.